Until this point, all of our tests have stubbed out our API. If we run the application on its own, we'll see an error right away. Looking at Chrome's DevTools, we'll see that our initial API call to load to-dos is resulting in a 404. If we try to add a to-do by submitting the form, we'll see another 404, and our to-do isn't added to the list. In order to make this application work on its own, we're going to need to set up our API. To keep this example easy to set up and run locally, our API will be handled with the JSON server npm module. This was installed as a dependency in our starter project, so everything is installed and ready to go. We can get our backend up and running with a simple change to the db.json file in the root of our project. We'll open the file, and in the empty object, we'll add a to-dos property and set its value to an empty array. We can save the file, and in the terminal, we can use Control c to stop the server, and then npm run dev to start it again. This time, it will start up with the to-dos in the db file, and it should respond to the API slash to-do endpoints that we've configured our app to use. Back in the browser, we can reload the page, and this time, there is no error message and no 404 in the DevTools. We can successfully submit a new to-do, and if we look at the Network tab in DevTools, we can see XHR calls being made and receiving appropriate responses. Back in the db.json file, we will see our two new to-dos have been persisted to the file. For this example, the db.json file is acting as our database. Now that our backend API is in a working state, let's create some full end-to-end -end tests. In the Cypress integration directory, we'll create a new file, and we'll call this one smoketest.spec.js. All of our previous tests have used stubbed network requests. This allowed us to test the front end without needing the back end connected. It also made it easy to test scenarios that can be difficult to set up, like error conditions from the server. Because of their flexibility, and the fact that stubs are relatively lightweight, Integration tests like those should make up the majority of our tests. Now that we have our backend connected, it's a good idea to have a few full end-to-end -end tests to ensure that our application truly works through each layer. Since these tests interact with more components and can be a little trickier to set up, we'll keep them to a minimum. We'll write a few tests that focus on the happy path and exercise each of our network request types. When this file is finished, we'll have one test each for our get, post, put, and delete requests. We'll add a describe block for our smoke tests, and we're going to want to group our tests into different contexts, so we'll add a context for tests that start with no to-dos. Our first test will make sure we can save new to-dos. We should make sure we start our test in a known state. This way, we can reliably make assertions about the state of our application. Since we're working with data from our backend API, we'll need to clear out the database before we start our new tests. Let's add a before each to the top level describe block, here, we can use sci.request to make a get request to the API slash to-dos endpoint. This will give us a response with all of the to-dos. We'll then use the its command, passing it the string body to get the body property from the resulting response object. Body will be the array of to-dos stored in the db.json file. We'll chain on an each command to iterate over the items. Inside the each, let's make another request. This time, we'll make a delete call to slash API slash to-dos and we'll use the string interpolation to append the to-dos ID to the end of the URL. Now, our before each will get all of the items in our database and delete them each one by one. Since this before each is in the top level describe, our database will be empty before running any test in this scope, regardless of which nested context it's defined in. It's worth pointing out that while this approach works for the purposes of this demonstration, it isn't the most efficient way to handle this. In a more complex application, and when dealing with larger data sets, you should look at other approaches, such as dedicated endpoints for bulk operations, or calling out to code that can operate on your data in a more efficient and direct way. Now, back in our test, we can visit the application. Then, we'll get the focused element, which we expect to be our text input. Then we'll issue a type command with the string by milk, and enter in curly braces to send the enter key. Then we can get the list and assert that it has a length of one. We'll save the spec file, and in the Cypress UI, we can run this spec by clicking on the smoke test file in our list. Our test will run, and we'll see that it passes. In this case, everything is working as expected, and our backend API is running locally, so it's pretty fast. It's a very real possibility that when testing against a real backend, things won't always be this fast, and our test might encounter unexpected delays. Let's add an artificial delay to our submit logic so we can see what happens to our test. In the to-do app component, let's find the handle to-do submit method and inside, we'll wrap the call to save to do in a set timeout. We'll set the timeout for four and a half seconds. Let's save the component, and back in the Cypress test runner, 
let's run the test again. This time, we'll see the test fails after a delay. We'll also see that even though our assertion failed, the end state of the application contains our expected item. In this case, the application did reach the desired state, but not within the default timeout. Our artificial delay in the app was longer than the default time that Cypress will retry to find our expected state. We created this delay, but the reality is that these delays are typically out of our control. Instead of making arbitrary guesses about potential delays, trying to configure a new timeout based on our guess, and hoping that our test will keep passing, we can tell Cypress to wait for the post request to complete. Back in our test, we'll start by adding a call to Server. Then we'll call Sci.Rail for a post request to our to-dos endpoint. We won't be stubbing this call, so we won't provide a response here. Instead, we're just going to listen to this request. We can use the as command to create an alias for this request. And we'll just call this one create. Now we can drop down after the type command and call Sci.Wait, passing in create prefixed with the at symbol to mark it as our alias. We've told Cypress that we expect a post to the to-dos endpoint and that after typing our to-do and pressing enter, it should wait for the response before moving on. Now our test won't be flaky due to unexpected network or server delays, and it more accurately describes our expectations. The test specifically calls out that we expect a network request and that our assertion is based on the application state after that response. Let's save the file, and when the test runs again, we'll see the delay, but this time, we'll see the wait in our create alias, and our assertion passes. Cypress waited out our artificial delay as instructed, and then continued on to our assertion. Let's remove the delay from our code. Back in the to-do app component, we can just delete the set timeout wrapped around our save to-do call. If we run our tests again, it will be noticeably faster. We are still waiting for the post response, but Cypress knows precisely when it resolves, so there is no additional delay. It's great that we can add a single to-do, but we should test that the app will handle having several to-dos entered, one after the other. Let's update our current test to handle multiple inputs. We'll start with a quick refactor. Let's break out the typed in text from the enter key. We'll just chain a second type command and put the enter in curly braces in the second one. Then we can remove it from the first type, leaving just the name of the to-do. Now at the top of the test, let's define a new array called items. We'll use the items array to drive our test, so it'll be an array of objects. Each object will have a text property, and this will be what we type into the input. And we'll also have an expected length property, which will represent the expected length of the to-dos list for that iteration. Let's duplicate this item twice, giving us three objects in the array. We'll update the second item to say by eggs, and we'll set the expected length property to two, and then the third item will be by bread, and the expected length will be three. Above the call to sci.focused, let's use sci.wrap to wrap our array. Then we'll use each to iterate over the array items. Each will take a function that receives to do as an argument, and we'll move our existing test code into this function and then we can update our type command and assertion to use the supplied to do object. We'll type the value of to do.txt, and then in our assertion, we'll assert that the list has a length of to do.expected length. Now we can save the spec file, and we'll see our test now inserts three new to dos. For each item, it waits for the post request to complete and asserts against the length of the list after that response. Now we have a test that doesn't rely on any stub network request. It exercises our application from the UI all the way down to the data persistence layer. Even without stubs, we were able to make this test reliable by ensuring a consistent starting state for our application. By explicitly waiting for our network requests to complete, we've guarded against inconsistent response times due to potential server or network delays.